Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan. I am focused on autoimmunity in COVID-19 and have been doing so since March 2020. So this is over two years. And um, I'm going to be speaking today about something that is very close to my heart. And that's about how we could have saved lives significantly across the world. It's what I call the COVID-19 treatment conspiracy. Now, you have to understand that when I speak about this, I will not be targeting who I think are the heroes in this, but there are questions that the heroes may have to answer, if that makes any sense. And I'll demonstrate what I'm talking about in a few minutes. And just to remind you, if you want to join me on a Substack for everything COVID-19, post podcasts and videos since March 2020, I would be honored to have you involved where I can share more of these thoughts. So let me get my name out of the way quickly and let's go. So this COVID-19 treatment conspiracy, I think, started here. Dexamethasone. This was clipped from the conversation and it is a a newsletter almost, a magazine, and dexamethasone, what is the breakthrough treatment for COVID-19. And I've highlighted here some of these heroes and I'll put them on a full screen here. And these are part of the team of the recovery trial. This is the COVID-19 trial that transformed the treatment across the world. And to give you an idea as to how it started, this is the, the, the conversations um, paper from that time. Two professors on a London bus had an impromptu discussion. And out of that discussion, they put together a trial with unprecedented speed within 15 days. More than a thousand participants across the UK had joined the trial and it had gone to 10,000 in five weeks. This was the recovery trial. And out of it, they found the benefit of dexamethasone. And to remind you, dexamethasone is a steroid. It's also part of the group of corticosteroids, which are anti-inflammatory medications used to treat a range of conditions. And I'll give you a quick idea of some of the conditions that we use with steroids. It's an integral part of how we practice medicine in many different ways. What I've done here is I've zoned in on this picture for the breakthrough treatment for COVID-19. I want you to notice right here, this is June 17, 2020. And to put it in context as to what they were doing is that they recruited the patients within, within five weeks, they had 10,000 patients. And this is just because of how the NHS is structured and they were able to pull all these centers together. But what is critical is that that was in June and they would publish their results as soon as they got it. Literally, as soon as they started their research, any results that came out, they just published it. There was no waiting, no time to waste. And it was through this that we got the breakthrough for dexamethasone in June. And here is what it has come up with when they reviewed the importance of it. Dexamethasone reduces deaths by up to one third. OK, and if you notice here, dexamethasone is the first drug to be shown to improve survival in COVID-19. It's an inexpensive on the shelf and can be used immediately to save lives worldwide. This was huge. I remember when this came out and this was big. It was a humongous bit of work. And look at this. It is estimated that dexamethasone saved over 22,000 lives in, in just the UK and over 1 million lives globally by March 2021. This was big. This was probably the biggest breakthrough that we had with regards to COVID-19. These are our heroes. Now it's time to ask the hard questions. So here is the hard question. Why didn't Oxford then take the next logical step? So the recovery trial was done through Oxford, randomized evaluation of COVID-19 therapy 
found that dexamethasone was of tremendous value. And remember at that time, it was said by one of the researchers, people were criticizing them for having steroids as part of the arm because they say you're going to kill patients. But no, they found surprisingly that this made a huge difference. So what's the next logical step? You took a punt with a drug, you tried a dose that was not too low or not too high, and it worked. You want to see then if your dosing is correct. Uh, that's clinical medicine. Do you have the right dose? What happens if you did lower? What happens if you do higher? So with that in mind, I give you a bit of idea. The dose that was selected for uh, COVID-19 was six milligrams of dexamethasone. And to put it in context, we don't use dexamethasone normally for most inflammatory conditions because it, it, it's just the way how it is absorbed and the impact that it has. It tends to be best used with regards to brain swelling. So we use it with brain tumors and so on because it can cross the blood brain barrier. We tend to use prednisone for most other things or even hydrocortisone or injection methylprednisolone. And the Dose equivalence, so six milligrams of dexamethasone is equivalent to 40 milligrams of prednisone. So they, they work in a similar way and they will have a similar effect. And within that context, just to show you how this works with doses. So just remember the prednisone dose is of 40 is equivalent to six milligrams of dexamethasone. And when we look at uh, certain conditions here, Lupus, when you're doing maintenance doses, it will be about 20 milligrams of prednisone. COPD, 30 to 40 milligrams if there is an exacerbation. Polymyalgia rheumatica, this is an inflammatory disease. We tend to start off at about 60 milligrams daily. And if you have lung vasculitis, we tend to use methyl prednisolone, um, which would be a gram, 1,000 milligrams, or converted to prednisone, which would be 1,250 milligrams. So what you're seeing here is that the dose that we can use is up to 50 times higher depending on the condition. And you can see here, I've brought in this uh, slide and this slide here, and I really should have mentioned exactly where it was from. It was from a paper looking at the um, at steroids with regards to um, uh, with regards to, I think, inflammatory diseases. And they, they were showing here that at lower doses, it has effects on the genome of the cells. This is a T lymphocyte, um, an inflammatory mediated uh, white blood cell, and it has non-genomic e effects um, at the much higher doses beyond 100 milligrams going up to 500 milligrams of uh, prednisone. And so you can see that we are used to using very high doses of steroids depending on the lung condition. And you have to remember in COVID-19, this was equivalent to a lung vasculitis. Anyone who looks at the pathology with COVID-19 would realize that the pathology required very high doses of steroids. So what happened with testing for the high dose? Well, this is where it gets quite interesting. The recovery trial, is then said they were going to investigate whether higher doses of dexamethasone deliver greater benefit for patients with severe COVID-19. This was in December 2021. How strange. We showed the benefit in June and we're only thinking about it in December. One would have thought that would be the absolute most obvious next step and you would want to do it with the same kind of speed that you did everything else. Here is what is important because high dose steroids had the potential to prevent death in the majority of severe COVID-19 cases if used quickly as soon as the patient deteriorated. It's very important to clarify that people have used steroids but they've used it too late. I'm talking about at the time you start dexamethasone, you would need to be using very high doses of steroids. And the point again, if moderate doses saved a million lives globally, imagine what high dose steroids could have done. And let me put this in context for you. For those who have followed me and listened to what I've had to say, remember Dr. Shankara Shetty from South Africa, 
over 10,000 patients, still counting, zero COVID deaths. And what did he use? A combination of antihistamines and high dose steroids. He was willing to use up to 300 milligrams of steroids on patients immediately, depending on their response to it. And just remember the doses here, that he was just above or between the very high dose and the higher dose that we'd use for polymyalgia rheumatica. And remember, Dr. Shetty got zero, I mean zero COVID deaths. The question then becomes, this is where the conspiracy theory comes about. And this is why I have a hard time explaining this. Why is this research still not yet done? Remember, this was December 2021. That was the first time they thought about it. And believe me, to not think about it immediately makes no clinical sense. You then want to optimize the dose. So let's give them six months to realize, oh boy, oh yes, maybe we should do it. But to still not have results on this, and we are currently in July 2022, how? Can that be explained from a clinical or a research point of view? My answer is very simple. Who gains the most? Who would gain from not having an answer like this? Certainly not patients. And this is where the hard part of the question is. And I would love to hear the history report 50 years down the line as to what happened why didn't we take that most simple step that could have achieved what at least one person had done in South Africa, zero deaths from severe COVID-19? Imagine if we had implemented that across the world. I don't know how else to say this, but to me, it is absolutely shocking that this has happened. And I challenge anyone to give me a logical reason as to why this wasn't done immediately, one, and two, why it still not has not been done anywhere properly in the world. And I really challenge Oxford on this because Oxford was able to influence the world because it was Oxford. There are not many places in the world that could have done this kind of study and got the world to change within days. Will we ever know the answer? I don't know. But let's please just remember, follow me on Substack if you want to hear more interesting concepts about COVID-19 and where I'll be sharing as much as I can. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you found this informative and valuable.